and welcome to Profix 12. As you can see, we have a lot of visual graphics here, and any place where the cursor changes to a pointing finger, as you see right here, means that this visual graphic is fully interactive. In this case, I'm going to double click on quarter four, and you will see that the bar chart drills down into October, November, and December. I can also right click and hit the up arrow and you'll see that we go back up to Q1 through Q4 on our quarterly spend. Any graphic as we're going through here where you see the cursor change to a pointed finger means that that graphic is interactive. We are capable of having quite a few different visual graphics here in Profix pie charts, bar charts. Up on the top left here you see we have an announcement section. My announcements can be used for giving instructions and timelines for things like month end or a budget process or a forecast. We can have any sort of key performance indicator or KPI measured and shown on your dashboard so we can see our top sales, we can see our stock price as needed. We have other types of charts. We have a fill chart, we have column charts, and we even have speedos. On the right hand side here in green is my tasks. This is a very important piece of the automation of Profix and I'm going to come back to that in more detail a little bit later. On the bottom left you have my favorites. What is nice about our dashboard is you can have a different dashboard for each group or function or person within your company. Therefore, if you have sales, they could have their key performance indicators or their departments shown on the screen for everybody in sales. Corporate management can have the indicators or the KPIs that are important to them. No matter what dashboard you are assigned or what dashboard you build for yourself, you can always have access to the ad hoc data views, the reports, or the processes that you work on on a regular basis. All you have to do is pin this to your startup screen and it will show up on your dashboard. Over on the right hand side you see we have department operating expenses and you'll notice that we're showing a variance for marketing on the bottom right here. Now I'm going to double click on marketing and you can see we're showing down to different departments and different variances both positive and negative. Well sometimes just looking at things graphically isn't enough. Sometimes we really want to start digging into the numbers. So I'm going to right click on this negative variance here and instead of drilling up or down I'm going to click on the link symbol and what that's going to do is that is going to open up the report that we use to build that visual graphic. Now another nice thing is using standard web controls I'm using the control plus sign I can increase my views so we can see things a little bit clearer. Here's a report. It's a very nice built report and we can see we have visual graphics on the top and we can see where travel cost has the biggest delta between actual and budget. Down here underneath we can also see through conditional formatting that travel cost is off by thirty thousand dollars. Now I did say conditional formatting. Just like Excel and if you are comfortable working in Excel you can build a report or a template inside Profix without a problem. Basic Excel skills and an Excel-like atmosphere allows you to quickly and easily build reports in Profix. Now I'm going to right click on this variance and I'm going to come down here to analyze. What Analyze does is this opens the data inside our ad hoc query. 
in our ad hoc or a data view this allows us to strip off all the formalities of a report and go down into the data inside Profix. So as we can see on this data view across the top we have our different versions, actuals, budget, the variance in between them. Down on the left we have our summary level accounts. The reason I know there's summary level accounts is because of the plus sign that you see on the left hand side there. Also on the left under pages we have the other dimensions that we can see. Here we have the different departments of marketing. Here we have the different months of the year and we can go down to different currencies and different views of the data. Now, real quick, I want to make things a little clearer and I want to turn this into a trend analysis. So I am just going to grab on the bar on the left hand side of my time and I am going to drag it and drop it into my columns. And just that easily we have changed over to our versions on top to our time dimension. And we can see that that $30,000 is in January for travel costs. Now I'm going to drill down and I'm going to hit the plus sign on travel costs and as you can see underneath travel costs we have lodging, airfare, car rental, entertainment and meals. These are the natural level or the leaf level accounts that make up travel cost. This is usually the level into which we will budget or forecast or in the case of actuals measure against. Now we could come back over here and I could select the different departments to try to see where a majority of that variance is or once again I can drag and drop and I'm going to drop this right on top of airfare and now I can see that product marketing has the lion's share of the variance for airfare for this month. When we load data into Profix, whether it is by a flat file, an Excel, or preferably an ODBC connection, a connection directly to your data from your ERP or your accounting system. If we have that connection and that pipeline to pull data in from, we can very quickly go back along that pipeline and see what details are behind the numbers. We tend to load data at the trial balance level, but sometimes we want to see the transaction level. So I can right click and go to drill across and that is going to take and drop a query into your ERP or your accounting system and it's going to pull the transactions back for that number. And I can come up here, I can sort descending and we can see that we have some big hitters, one very big hitter in that variance and that's a fifteen thousand dollar charge. Now if you are scanning your invoice in your ERP or your accounting system we can actually drill back across and take a look at the PDF that is associated with this charge. And as we can see here on our invoice this was for a conference for one, two, three, four, five, six people in January. And this conference was something that was not budgeted for. Now, if we stop and think for a second, in a very short period of time, we have seen a variance on our dashboard. We've looked at the report behind that variance. We've drilled into the data behind the report and then we've gone and looked at the transactions that made up some of the numbers in that data view all in a very short period of time. Now we know very quickly that I need to call product marketing and talk to the manager there and find out if this conference for six people is something I need to budget for in following years. 
Now, in my own personal experience as an FP&A analyst, I know that that would have taken me several phone calls or actually getting up and walking over to the marketing department to find out who had gone to the conference, what type of conference this was, whether or not it would be something that we would be doing going forward. So I have been able to save an awful lot of time just by being able to drill in to the variances that I see on a dashboard. Now, for the sake of our conversation, we're going to say that, yes, we are going to budget for this coming up in the next year. So back here on my dashboard, let's go back to my tasks. The best way to explain this is we have an ability in Profix to automate repetitive tasks. That way we take people out of the equation and reduce the chance for errors. And the best way to describe a repeatable task is to talk about budgets. So when it comes to budgeting, we have a budget template that we send out to our budget managers for them to fill out to give us the information that we need to come up with next year's budget. Well, with our workflow, we can take and automatically send those templates out to the different budget managers. When they're done filling out those templates, they send it back to Profix, and Profix then notifies the next person in line or the approver to say, hey, this template has been returned. Can you please look it over and approve it? Once the approver gets that email, they go in, they look at what was returned, and now you go through the exception rejection routine. You take a look at it and you decide, you know what? No, this isn't good enough. Um, I don't understand some of these numbers. You can annotate the template, send it back to the budget manager. They can fix it or provide more explanations, send it back to you. You'll get notified that it's back. And after you're satisfied, you hit approve. The numbers get put into Profix, into the budget version. And then, automatically, you can have some sort of report generated, however you need to look at your budget, whether it's a variance report, you know, looking at prior year, prior forecast, whether it's a pro forma P&L, whether it's a bridge report, whatever it needs for you to look at, you can have that automatically generated and distributed via email in Profix. That is called workflow. And very simply, my tasks is my piece, my individual responsibility of a given workflow. So in the case of the budget, I need to go in and prepare my department operating expense report. And as we can see, I'm a little bit overdue. And all I need to do is click on it. And my operating expense report shows up. And what we have here is in white, we have data that comes from other systems within Profix. The yellow is areas in which we can manually load data. The gray is just summary level data of the items above it. Now, back in lodging, if you noticed, uh, we were off by $10,000. So I'm just going to very quickly update this to $16,462. Please notice on the left here that the 2017 number is $75,000. I'm going to hit enter and I am going to update this template and notice that my year very quickly updates to $85,000. Now, being an FP&A guy, I don't really like to have changes to my data without some sort of substantive note or explanation. Well, I can right-click on this cell 
and I can add a comment. In this case, I'm going to say new January conference. Now I can click the plus side and add it. Also, if you have some sort of forms, you can have those added as well. Like, I used to have some post-closing journal entry forms. So if we had something that happened after closing, we would get one of the forms, and I could actually attach that to these comments so people could see what changed the number after we had closed month end. In this case, I'm just going to click plus, and I'm going to close, and you can see over the number there's now a red triangle, and if I mouse over that value, my comment comes up. So this can be very handy in looking through your budgets and your reports to see who changed a number, why it was changed, and you could even add a second note to it saying approved by the CFO and put initials in. So it's a very quick, easy way to communicate one-off changes that you have in your budget. Now over here on our forecast, this is a September forecast, you'll notice we think we're going to finish the year at 99,000. Let's say we believe that number for a minute. Let's say we think we're going to end the year at 99,000. So I'm going to change this just for ease of numbers to $100,000 and I'm going to hit enter. And very quickly Profix says stop. Hey, come on. There's 12 months in that year. How do you want me to spread this new data throughout those months? As a matter of fact, any time in Profix you try to add a number at a summary level or a higher level where there's lower level data, it's going to ask you to stop and ask you how you want to spread the data. Now we can spread evenly. I've only ever done that if I've had a new account and I needed to just put numbers in it you know, a rough estimate. That way it would show up on the report and the re budget manager could then put in the correct numbers. Normally I would hit spread based on existing data. What this does is this collects the seasonality of the data and then will proportionalize the difference in the amount over the months based on seasonality. And just to show you we can also spread data based on member property values or based on data in other dimensions. Where this has come in handy with me before is in the allocation of data. So let's say I needed to allocate my IT expense. So I needed to allocate my IT expense and I wanted to allocate it through the other departments based on headcount because everybody's got a laptop. So I could actually grab the headcount by department and then spread the IT expense over those departments based on the proportion of headcount in each department. A very powerful tool. We can also load data by increasing it by 10% or decreasing it by 10%. A lot of ways to do what-if scenarios and a lot of ways to look at your data a little differently or to build different variations into your budget. In this case, I'm just going to spread on existing data. And as you can see, we've updated to the 100,000, and my number now has gone from 16,000 to 19,000. And again, this note is going to follow that number because we store calculations and notes centrally in our database. What this means is wherever I pull up January lodging, for product marketing, for the 2017 budget, that note is going to come up with that value, whether it's another report, whether it's another template for a forecast, or whether it's just a simple ad hoc query that you're trying to do some research. That note is going to come up with that number because we store things centrally within our database. Now sometimes we need to add a little more detail than just a note in the system. 
You'll notice the next two lines have little blue triangles to the bottom right of them. And, as a matter of fact, if you remember, we had an additional 15000 in airfare. If I go to add that amount, Profix once again stops me and says this account can only be updated using line item schedules. We have these line item schedules or line item detail that you can force or require to have on different accounts. What this does is requires below the line detail that your budget managers need to enter in order to show what how this number was created. I'm going to click OK and here's the line item detail and as you can see for airfare up here what we're doing is we're showing where we're going how many people are going and how much it's going to cost for us in airfare every month. So in the case of our new conference there were six people on the uh, invoice and it was fifteen thousand dollars in January so very quickly I've added that detail and you can use this for anything office supplies I used to use it for our laser printing cartridges we used to have very expensive cartridges so I would have line item detail below that showed the different floors of different buildings so I could budget which ones would be used up in which month and then I could update it and we could very accurate on when we were using and when we would need to re resupply our laser cartridges. Here I've added the new conference. I'm going to hit save and very quickly that 10,000 turns into 25,000. And again you can have the line item schedule required or not required on any account that you wish to track. Now, sometimes we need to model items in our budget a little more detailed than that. So, we have a part of Profix called the Detailed Planning Manager. Detailed Planning Manager is great for complex modeling that requires different maths, different structure, you know, banding, if-then statements, drop-down menus to select different items. Uh, you can get very, very complicated. A great way to show that is through personnel planning. If you think about it, planning for headcount and personnel can be very problematic, especially in an Excel world where you have to have different tabs for different pieces to have them all add up. You know, you've got state taxes, federal taxes, required taxes, voluntary taxes. You've got benefits. You've got allowances. You know, all of this has to add up. Start dates, stop dates, transfer dates. Personnel planning can get very complicated, and it's a great way to show the detail planning manager. And we're going to switch over and do that, but another thing that we can use this for, if you want to think about it, is CapEx planning, so we can track in service date, uh, depreciation, I, I don't care if it's straight line or if you use a macros, you can track it whichever way you want. Um, we can use it for loans, you know, large incoming loans at a low interest where we have an interest expense, and then maybe we take that money and we divvy it up in smaller loans at a higher interest rate so we have interest revenue. We can track all of that. Uh, you can track projects. You can track cash flow. Uh, you can even do a net present value analysis within the detail planning manager. So just keep all of that in mind as we go through and I'm going to show it to you in a personnel perspective. Now just to show you how quickly we can update between models in the system, please notice that we do not have anything loaded in content marketing under personnel. So when I'm done showing you Detail Planning Manager, I'm going to hit update, come right back over here, and show you how quickly we can transfer data between the different models inside of Profix. 
So back to my tasks, and I'm going to come down here and click on Department Personnel. So my piece of the workflow is to finish off my personnel budget for the year. Now I'm going to scroll to the right here, and I'm going to open up the payroll taxes. And the reason I want to do that is because I can show you a few things very quickly here. Please notice that Mr. Ethan Edwards on line 9, he's starting in March. He's an existing employee. He is coming from another department in March. So February will be the last day for him in, say, content are in uh, product marketing. And then he's going to come over here into content marketing starting in March. We have two rows below that. We have an open position that we expect to fill in April. And we have an open intern position that we expect to fill in March. We can show any sort of start dates. We can also show termination dates. If you're going through a downturn and you happen to know people will be transferred or being allowed to seek employment elsewhere, you can show those dates as well and fit that into your model so you know what you're spending. I'm going to go up here to the first record, Miss Sarah Anderson, and I'm going to go into edit to show you some of the inner workings. The ID can be generated by Profix, or if you have a HR system or a payroll system, you can actually pull that data in, and so their employee number from another system can actually be their ID inside Profix. One of the benefits of Profix is being able to pull data from a lot of disparate systems in order to analyze them thoroughly. So if you can pull from your payroll system or your HR system, you can pull those control numbers directly. As we go down here, you can see we have drop downs. In this case here, position. Sarah's a director. Let's say the director and vice president get a phone and a car allowance. So if on this drop-down I select director or vice president, that phone and car allowance is going to show up in the budget. Or like me, being an analyst, since I'll have an analyst selected for me, that amount of money will not show up under my budget because we won't be paying for my phone or my car. So you can have a lot of calculations attached to these drop-downs that you create for whatever you need. Down here on the bottom, you know, different countries, different states. As we change states, you know, different taxes. Some have state tax, some don't. We could change country. If we were to change to Canada, then that would mean the different provincial taxes would kick in. You know, different vision plans, health plans, dental plans. As you select which one they've chosen, it has the right percentages to show within the budget, both as a deduction from the employee plus what the employer has to pay, you know, for the health care expense. Now, real quick, just to show how quick items update, I'm going to give Sarah a really large raise here to $115 million. I'm going to hit OK. Now, notice the taxes here are all spread fairly evenly. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say calculate. And just that quickly, Profix has calculated everything for the new annual salary. And notice that the payroll taxes are all now paid in January. Because we here in the States we have some caps on some of our taxes, as we flipped over to that huge payroll, all of her taxes were paid in the first month. So as you can see, as you're changing things and fine-tuning inside a model in the Detail Planning Manager, you can very quickly update your data to get a very accurate model of what you're looking for. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Update. And what this is doing now is this is transferring the data that we've built here in this model, and it's transferring it over to my finance model. The finance model has but updated successfully. So I'm going to close out of here, and I'm going to go back to my OPEX report. 
I'm going to go back to content marketing and you'll see how quickly that we can update between models. I used to have a production model and when that was updated the change in the production would update the variable expenses underneath manufacturing spend in a flex budget model and then we would take those numbers and compare it over to our actuals. So very quickly you can go between models as needed. Now somebody is going to be very sharp and notice that 50 million is a chunk less than 115 million and one of the nice things about detailed planning manager that I did not mention at the time is that you can also have it automatically allocate your revenues and expenses between different departments as needed. So in this case, since Sarah was a director, her salary has been allocated between different departments. So just so you know, you can have allocations happen very quickly in Detail Planning Manager as well. Now one of the things I would like to show very quick is I want to show you some driver-based sales planning. The first thing on this sheet I would like to point out is please notice that each of the columns here is done by week. With our time dimension, we can go down to actually daily planning as necessary. So we can go down to the day, we can go down the week, we can plan by month, by year, whatever is needed for your specific business. Now, I was able, using another dimension of having AM and PM shift, I was able to go down to even a lower level of detail, so not only could we see some of our operational data by day, we could also look at the differentials between the two shifts and make comparisons there. And not only detailed, we can go the other extreme with Profix as well. Every year my boss would have me fill out a three-year tax plan and it would be very high level revenue and he would give me a list of say the top dozen operating expenses that he wanted to show and we would do a three-year very high level plan and produce that for our tax accountants over at the corporate office I do know of one company that does plan their expenses out 20 years because they're on an endowment, they need to show what their expenses are going to be going forward for 20 years. That way they make sure that there's enough money and interest in the endowment to cover their expenses going forward. So, again, the flexibility as detailed as you want or as high level as you need. Very easy to do. Now also in here, I often get asked about we calculate this number, whether it's RVUs for medical or you know, in my case, average sales price, any sort of constant that you use within your business can be stored, again, centrally, like I was talking about earlier, to be used in any report or any data view or any um, process that you need. And in this case, average sales price, it's a constant that we use when we're looking at production value. We can look at that and I can have that calculated based on actuals in the prior year or it's something that I can actually calculate external to Profix and have brought into Profix and stored to be used within these different templates. And in this case, I just want to show very quickly that if we change our production and I update, I'll show on the graphic up here is the easiest, very quickly we can update our sales assumptions going forward. So again, we can have drivers stored within Profix and you can build very easy or very complex models to show your business and how it works at different levels of production or revenue or whatever it is you need to measure. Now, all of this data is all well and good. It's nice to know we can very quickly change data. It's nice to know that we can go in and update, standardize, 
and be as complex or as streamlined as we wish to be for our business model inside of Profix. All of that is great and good, but no system of data is worth it unless you can turn it into inf information and distribute that information to people to be consumed to make decisions on. So what I would like to show next is our report binder. Now this piece of Profix is um, another feature and this allows us to pull in different items from different areas to create a very nice boardroom quality report. Notice the first two lines here are Word documents and if you look on the top left here we can include Excel, Word documents, or PDFs above and beyond the normal templates that we have within Profix itself. So you could have a very nice cover page built up for your reports. We could pull that in. You could have different disclaimers, uh, footnotes, um, executive summaries generated and pull Profix data into that. As a matter of fact, with our Excel add-in, you can actually have items external to Profix updated automatically once you're done with your month in. So we can pull the data into Excel and then have that update items in a Word doc or in a PDF for your presentations. And then, if appropriate, we can pull these updated documents back into Profix to show them with the actual templates. Now, one of the things I like to talk about at this point is security. You'll notice we have only five reports here on this page. Now, we distribute to a lot of different people in a lot of departments in a lot of different sales regions with just these five reports. So in my case, when I distribute this, I want my folks in Australia to see Australian data. So they're going to see their data, and it's just going to be the accounts that they deal with. So the report, you know, from my old company when I was at FP&A, the report would collapse down to show just what was going on in Australia. It was a smaller sales center, so it did not have quite as much detail. Then the European region would get a slightly larger report. The report would expand back out to have the European data in there and show the accounts that were used by the Europeans. And then for across the world, all the financial managers and you know the executives, they would get a full report with everything in it. So full set of accounts, you know, a full set of pages with each different region. So what's nice is based on security, the reports that are generated in Profix will expand or contract as needed depending on your security level. So the folks in Australia, I made sure that they could only see things for the Australian region. For the folks in Europe, they could only see items for the European region. And for the execs, they could see everything. So very easy to set in our security manager. And you can get, again, as detailed as you want. You could actually get down to the point of, you know, one person could see one account in one region for one month and then turn it off. So, also the other side of the coin is writing data into Profix or loading data into Profix. In my case, at my old company, I was the only person who could load actuals. Because I was bringing actual from... 26 different legal entities, I had a process and I wanted to make sure everything went right. So I was the only one who could load actuals and if something wasn't quite right I knew which pieces of the process to rerun to get the best and most current data into the system. Now if you're looking at budgets and forecast then I would have whoever needed to put data in the system have the ability to put data in for a budget. So be it the budget managers or the FP&A analysts, 
or you know the CFO. Whoever needed to put the data in would have permissions. But the other side of that is when your budget is over, you can lock down your budget version and you can remove permissions very quickly and easily so nobody can change your number going forward. So again, the security is a very integral part of Profix and it allows us to have a very small set of reports that can be used for a multitude of different departments or regions and have security control who sees what. Then, through either workflow, you can automate this or you can go into a process, push the start button, and Profix will start generating these reports and will automatically email them out. So as you can see, we have a very detailed cover sheet. We have different language coming up, statutory statements. Here we have you know, information or an executive summary about our segments and geographic areas. And then, as you can see, we start with our reports. This one happens to have some spark charts on the side. And I'm going to come down here to the bottom a bit and just show you, at the beginning I talked about conditional formatting. As you can see, the conditional formatting comes through quite well on the reports. So again, all you need is basic Excel techniques and you can build a very nice looking boardroom quality report from within Profix.